you everyone for, there we go. Absolute. Hit the recording button. And thank you everyone for coming here to IQIM to our seminar today. And um, I'd like to introduce Cyprian Lewandowski. He has a very interesting uh, paper to present here that, that recently came out and it's it's on a, this interesting topic of twisted bilayer graphene, a uh, topic that I'm familiar with from the experimental side. It's um, seen a lot of a lot of work from different theorists all around, and it's it's uh, very exciting to see um, all the new work that's been coming out, and especially Cyprian's work is is interesting, and it, it kind of it has a nice um, a nice touch to it that that kind of um, Kind of blends theory in a way that could be somewhat accessible to to experimentalists and I, I think that's done really well here and I, I hope you appreciate the talk. Um, as a few notes of reference here, uh, we're going to allow you to ask questions anytime during the talk. All you will have to do is hit the raise your hand button or enter a question into the question answer box and um, you can ask at any time uh, during the talk and, and we'll then allow you to talk or if there's a question and answer um, box comment that pops up, then I'll, I'll give that to Cyprian as well. Uh, and then after the talk also join us in Gather Town um, for some more discussion, um, kind of informal discussion between you and the speaker or you and whoever. And I just posted the link to the chat here. So, um, uh, thank you for coming, Cyprian, and here you go. Uh, okay, uh, if, thank you if, if very much for the nice uh, introduction and the invitation. And as uh, Robert say, said, I will be talking to, today to you about the uh, pairing a mechanism in a magic angle twisted by layer graphene in a particular what's the a role played it by phonon and the plasma home club uh, uh, processes in immediating a uh, superconductivity. This, uh, this work is done in collaboration with it the Banjan, uh, 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 and uh, Jonathan uh, Rugman. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, looking more at this paper, please, please, please have a look at our. Uh, uh, archive uh, submission. Okay, so uh, uh, in 2018, the uh, condensed matter community uh, it, it was erupted by a, a discovery of uh, superconducting and uh, 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 and a uh, correlated insulating a uh, behavior in two two twisted uh, bilayer. Uh, graphene and this behavior it, it uh, appears only in vicinity of very special angle called the magic angle and that's something which I will explain uh, later on it, it's been uh, experimentally uh, verified also in other samples and because the same sample can exhibit both uh, uh, superconducting and insulating a behavior and because the phase a diagram of, of, of such a sample looks uh, similar to the phase diagram of high TC uh, superconductors, this of course generated a lot of uh, interest and, and, and people were, uh, were, were trying to answer uh, what is the origin of, of this superconducting a behavior, what is the origin of this uh, insulating cetate, so wh whether they are uh, two coming from the same sources, whether they come from electron-electron interactions or from, from, from uh, something else. And of course, the underlying motive is whether we can use this to construct high temperature uh, room temperature super air conductors. And, uh, since then, there has been uh, uh, several works, uh, also one here at Ecaltech by Stefan's group, uh, which actually show that uh, it, it's possible to observe a, a superconductivity in samples uh, 
uh, where there's no insulating a behavior and this insulating behavior can be killed either by uh, by a screening gate or, or, or by uh, moving it to a different twist angle, uh, which is then stabilized by the TMDs or, or with the help of a, uh, of a, uh, of a uh, electrostatically tunable uh, additional immaterial. So, so the fact that you can see this superconductivity and not see insulating behavior in the same sample is actually very interesting and it potentially points uh, towards a different uh, origins of these two uh, phenomena. And of course, this is just a few of the experimental papers, uh, but there, there were many, 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 many uh, theory papers. And here I just uh, try to put a list of all of the uh, superconducting papers, which I'm sure I missed some. Uh, and, 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 and this list more or less is up to date as of August 2020. And there were uh, more uh, papers as, as since then. And as you can imagine, oh, oh, all of these papers absolutely agree with one uh, one another. Uh, they can also agree to certain extent with experiments. So so there is a lot of uh, uh, push and pull in the air community. What are the origins? What is interesting? What is not interesting? What is the underlying uh, in, 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 a mechanism of uh, a superconductivity and also of the uh, insulating states, but but uh, uh, not to uh, not to uh, worry. Uh, uh, most likely uh, uh, a consensus on what is the uh, correct uh, uh, ex explanation uh, will be uh, uh, reached shortly, much like uh, it was in the. Uh, high TC uh, a, a corporate a, a, a community, uh, uh, right? Uh, so I assume that this joke was absolutely funny and everyone is laughing. And uh, with this, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to take a step back and, and, and just do a short a recap what is a twisted a, a bilayer graphene, what, what are the main observable and, and, and uh, how I'm, uh, and what are my questions which I'm uh, trying to answer. So if, if, if you're new into this field, you, you uh, it might be asking like, what, what is twisted uh, by layer graphene? Do I need to go through all of this uh, series, a body of uh, a literature? Uh, and uh, so uh, what I would like to do now is, is just to give you a very, uh, brief introduction to what it is. So the idea is that is you take two monolayer sheets of uh, graphene, which is a material very thoroughly studied, and, and, and you put them one on top of each other. And then you introduce a very sim small angle twist. And uh, this uh, leads to a, 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 to, a, to, to, to a small lattice mismatch locally, uh, but all, all Overall, it also introduces a, a global periodicity. And there's a, a question. Oh, OK. Uh, 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 and, and there's a global periodicity peer, peer here indicated with the blue uh, if, if, if vectors. It's called the, uh, the MORA period. And this MORA period can be order of two orders of magnitude be bigger than that of the underlying lattice. Uh, and the key point there is that uh, this, this leads, leads to, big, because we have a new bigger a unit cell effectively in a real space, it gives rise to a formation of a small effective uh, Brillouin zone. And as a er, er, a result, we end up with a low effective uh, energy uh, theory, which at very special angles, and these are called the uh, magic angles, we end up with very flat uh, bands. And uh, when I'm saying flat, it's, it's also uh, it's always good to ask uh, with respect to what and what are the absolute energy scales. So firstly, the uh, 
a bandwidth of these bands as, as predicted by non non uh, interacting theory is on the order of few uh, uh, MEV and, and, and these flat bands are uh, as, as, as separated by a gap from the dispersive bands, which are the bands two and three and two prime and three prime. But uh, the more uh, curious question is uh, what are they uh, uh, narrow with respect to what? So this small a bandwidth, it will give rise to a, a lower Fermi a velocity uh, as predicted by the non-interacting model is actually two orders of a magnitude similar than, than that of a monolayer graphene. In experiments, it's more like an uh, order of a magnitude. But uh, uh, what, what, what this translates to is that if one were to look at the characteristic ir ratio of the a potential to the a kinetic energy, which is uh, summarized by, the, by a, a fine structure constant of, of, of a such a system, then we would find that this is much bigger than one. And, and this hints uh, at the, uh, a regime of uh, strongly interacting physics. And, uh, and as I uh, mentioned in my first slide, uh, this, this has been of, uh, seen in, in as, as, as several ex experimental uh, it, it, it devices, which can see in the same sample coexisting uh, a superconducting and a correlated uh, insulator phases. Uh, and, and with the help of a, a gate, it's possible to uh, uh, to you from a, a regime where your sample, uh, when your flat bands, which are each fourfold degenerate, are uh, completely depopulated, and then we have a, a conventional band insulator to a uh, to, to a, a regime where, where where we have superconducting fluctuations. To then at integer feeding, we see. It correlated cetates, and if you tune away from these, you, you see superconducting cetates. And uh, this is a, a, a very uh, a interesting. And if you uh, want to look more, more into this, there's this very good uh, a recent a review, uh, which puts uh, together all of the samples which were done just for pure TBG, so, so not TBG on a uh, on the uh, TMT, and what they see that in, indeed there's a, a super a conducting dome uh, on both electron and a hole side, but it occurs predominantly on the a hole side. It, it persists in a big a range of angles, if you wish, uh, uh, near the magic angle as predicted by non-interacting theory, uh, and, and there there are always these insulating cetates which all occur at at uh, integer feeling. It's also uh, possible, uh, like I said, uh, with a special uh, setup to kill the presence of these in insulating cetates. And then you, you see super air conducting domes, uh, which occur more or less at the same places, but also you, you'll see a new dome. Uh, and, and in a place which was previously uh, insulating, now we have a, a, a metal. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, oh, Gil has raised the hand. Uh, so, how do I do that? I go into participants. Now, now you should be able to talk. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Gil, I think you're still asked to unmute. I think. Um, okay, huh. now. I, it was, I had to look for the button. Yeah, sorry for stopping. So the, the new superconducting dome that appears, is that with the gates close to the sample from Efetov experiment? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, 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 you, so, then, so that you put a gate close to the thing, right? Right, yes. So, so you put a gate and, 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 and this gate is then uh, uh, brought it within a length scale comparable to it, a more uh, a period, and in doing so, you kill uh, 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 kill the electronic origins of of a correlated insulating cetates, and you are just left with uh, 
uh, super air, air conducting uh, uh, domes. Great, thanks. Um, right. Uh, so if you look at 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 at, uh, at, at these two things, you uh, it might think that this uh, uh, un, uh, ambiguously points towards an electron phonon uh, in mechanism, but uh, uh, I think it's still a worthwhile to to ask whether it's possible that the uh, a mechanism is due to something else, or due to some kind of electronic uh, in mechanism in, in origin. I also want, wanted just to say that at, at samples from uh, Stefan, uh, uh, you, you can see uh, uh, superconductivity at angles which are uh, smaller than this. And <clears throat> at, at these angles, you similarly by twisting away from the magic angle, you can kill the air it correlated uh, insulating states, but you still see the domes, which I think occur at, uh, at similar things. Okay, so uh, uh, with that, the key points which I wanted to introduce through, through, through this to someone who's not following, but also to uh, and myself to keep in mind, sorry, to someone not following the field, not, not following the talk, uh, uh, is that we have a uh, a rich physics which is air controlled by a twist angle. And uh, we have, uh, uh, as a, a result of, of putting two uh, in monolayer sheets on top of each, each other, we end up with a, uh, uh, with an, a large effective a, a, a unit cell, which in turn gives rise to a, a small effective Brillouin zone. Now, uh, this, uh, it, in combination with an interlayer coupling, uh, produces a, a in, uh, produces in, uh, in narrow bands, which uh, which are uh, very narrow as compared to the scale of electronic interactions, pointing at the, at the strongly coupled system, and. Uh, 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 I, I didn't mention it, but uh, because the two bands come from uh, a direct cones, which are itself a topological, you might think, and, and you, you would think correctly that, that the uh, flat bands are a topological in, in nature, and they are, uh, so, so that uh, further it complicates the uh, analysis. So, so you might be wondering, uh, what can we do in this situation? Uh, what is our plan of attack? How 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 can we set up the uh, super air, air conductivity? Okay, so the way how uh, we do this, or the way how I I chose to do is that I will uh, ignore the uh, topological aspect and I will just focus on the uh, kinetic and uh, air, air characteristic uh, energy circuits which are present in the system. So I will focus on TBG flat bands and I will analyze a, 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 a superconductivity as it appears in these two flat bands. And the superconductivity, as we will see, can, can arise either from phonons, can arise from plasmons or through their uh, interplay. Uh, next, because I want my super air conducting pairs to have a net zero a, a momentum, I need to focus on an in, inter valley pairing, so not a pairing inside one of the valleys, which would have a net a, a non zero momentum. So this forces a certain type of uh, interaction on, 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 on me, but uh, most not, not, not notably what, what, what we will keep in our analysis is this presence of a, a form a factor, so indicated by the capital a lambda. And what were these form factors which are present in, in, in our uh, e, e, e interaction, what, what, what these form factors do, they uh, encode the un, uh, underlying properties of Bloch a wave function. So to that extent, the topologically uh, the et topology present in the system is not not lost. It's only uh, it's uh, encoded in this form factors. Okay, and then uh, because 
the system is so strongly coupled, our ATC uh, is, uh, is a sim sim small fraction of the chemical potential, but it's definitely not orders of magnitude similar than uh, than the chemical potential as such. Therefore, if I were to uh, analyze the origins of a superconductivity within any kind of uh, a weak coupling approach, and I didn't artificially make it a weaker, I could end up with uh, unphysical answers. So to that extent, because the problem is so strongly coupled, we would need to solve a system of coupled equations, one for a chemical potential, how it's being changed by interaction for self, uh, self energy, for the super air conducting gap. And so uh, to avoid this additional complexity, what I'm going to say is let us uh, introduce a uh, a large and uh, a perturbation such that my interaction either phonon on a, or, or the a coulomb interaction will be suppressed by a factor of n. And this then allows me to uh, simplify my analysis to just solving one, uh, one system of uh, equations, sorry, one, one equation, and that's an equation for the uh, uh, superconducting gap. And uh, uh, and I will analyze two possible channels. One channel is going to be coming from uh, a, a, a from a Coulomb uh, interactions, and to allow for a possibility of a uh, of a electron electron pairing, I need to make this uh, this interaction frequency dependent, since a setat in Coulomb uh, interaction is uh, is of course. A repulsive, and then we, we will also have the uh, if phononic if, if channel, which is an uh, which is an uh, attractive uh, interaction, and to keep both of them on the same footing, I, I am doing these this uh, 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 calculation uh, uh, in a uh, both in, uh, in, in, in momentum and frequency. Uh, 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 space. So, so I, I am not saying let us do a traditional ABCS, but also allow for some uh, frequency independence. Okay, so uh, and mathematically, what, what this comes out to is that I need to solve this uh, a linearized equation, and and uh, uh, what I get for, through such a calculation is uh, I, I see whether the uh, when, when does the superconducting a kernel uh, uh, have an uh, integer uh, when the largest possible, uh, largest a positive eigenvalue of the superconducting kernel is one. This corresponds to the onset of uh, uh, of a super a, a conductivity, and through that I can uh, I can uh, see what is the corresponding TC. But if I want to calculate the gap, then, then I need to modify my equation such that it's not a, a linearized problem, which can also be done. But that, that, that's, 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 that's not to, to worry. Uh, I, I just wanted to is, is, is set it up. Uh, and then uh, what I wanted to make clear is that uh, this pretty much looks the same thing as our conventional uh, gap equation from uh, ABCS. We, we, we also have the uh, uh, propagator uh, co contribution. We have this additional terms which encode the block uh, away functions, the form factors, and then we will study the different roles played by, uh, played by the different types of uh, e e interactions. And if you're interested just to look how one does these, these uh, Heliosberg calculations, then there's a very good paper which I recommend, and that's a paper which taught me, uh, I would say, almost everything that I know on this topic. So uh, it's it's uh, uh, very good. Okay, so with this, let us begin with the phonon channel. And we I consider only the uh, pairing as it's coming from the acoustic phonons of graphene, and that's permitted because the optical phonons of graphene they, they appear at frequency of around 150, uh, 200 uh, MeV. So that's not uh, sorry, uh, uh, 
200. A Kelvin, so 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 that's not important for our uh, characteristic frequencies. So uh, because so we begin with our acoustic phonons of uh, graphene. Uh, however, because of this uh, MORE Berlin zone, the uh, the uh, uh, the phonon dispersion will end up being folded, 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 and then uh, it, it, because of this additional interlayer coupling between the two layers, actually that there will be. Uh, a gaps which are open in the spectrum. So, so this this, this uh, formation of this uh, phonon mode has been analyzed in 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 this paper. But of course, uh, this would uh, complicate the story. So, uh, what I would choose to do is to uh, keep all of this in mind and just focus on a very simple uh, phonon model. And that is, let's say, uh, we have a linear dispersion which gets to the edge of our uh, Berlin zone. Here, k corresponds to is, is 0 0.5, and then it gets a folded, 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 folded. And I, and I will not uh, consider in my calculation the uh, importance of the gap, but you will see whether that matters or not and how it's going to change the story. Now, uh, the just so that we keep in mind, uh, the uh, model which I'm using follows also a paper by 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 Ekoshino, and 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 uh, it's a bandwidth is uh, is around 3.75 uh, MeV, so it lands in the middle of the uh, second uh, phonon uh, branch. Okay, so there's the new ingredient, and that's our. Uh, claim to fame is uh, there's a possibility for a, a Murare Ephonon umklap. And what I mean by this is that uh, in a normal superconductivity, this is just a plot for one uh, one of the if, if valleys, there is of course an additional valley. Uh, uh, when we take a cetate from one edge of the Fermi surface, this cetate then interacts with a corresponding uh, time irreversal er partner from the other valley. It exchanges some momentum and it's being moved to the uh, to the other side or some some or some other place of that Fermi surface. And and when, if the momentum exchange is less than the uh, irreciprocal lattice momentum, here the irreciprocal lattice momentum, I mean the momentum uh, of the in more uh, zone, then that's the uh, a conventional uh, uh, non umclap uh, momentum exchange. But in the TBG, because the Buron zone is so small uh, and the block away functions, as we will see, are actually very strongly coupled between in their boring. Uh, Burn zones. There's a possibility of an uh, uh, of an umclap process uh, by a uh, reciprocal lattice a vector, and, and and that's why in, in my analysis I will keep track of the uh, no umclap processes where we allow one momentum exchange, where we allow two, three, and so on. Okay, and as I said, we are considering an intervalley pairing. And, and the knowledge that we, uh, what's the uh, weight which comes from each umclap process is going to be a contained in the overlap between block wave function in, in each of the two uh, mini Brown zones. And I just wanted to keep in mind because it, it, it's an, an interesting fact which will become important for the plasmon mode, uh, the plasmon pairing is that the phononic channel is overall always uh, attractive. Okay, but this uh, phononic channel, in addition with the UNCLA processes, it will lead to, a, uh, to an enhancement of superconductivity. And what I mean by this is that when we analyze the superconducting dome, uh, here, this is uh, this this a calculation done is uh, in a big N limit. Here, N is uh, uh, equal to 
20, uh, that's why you shouldn't uh, think of these uh, TC values as actual TC values, which you see in the experiment. When we add Uncla process, we see a massive enhancement of the ETC. And then uh, at, at some point, and at some point is set by your, uh, by your A model, you will, uh, you will see that your superconducting dome uh, will saturate. Uh, now, this is interesting on its own, and I wanted to keep that in mind uh, for, for everyone following is that uh, uh, in a traditional BCS theory, we would ex 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 expect our superconducting domes to be peaked at the Van Hoff singularities of, of the bands. And indeed, in the zero-G limit, they are peaked at the Van Hoffs of this model. But as we add these Uncla processes, this gives rise to a shift away from the if, if, if Van Hoff and, and, and it, it, it it, and it, it, it wants to peak uh, the, the dome at these high feelings. So uh, we need to ask what are the origins of, of this uh, TC enhancement? And, and I, I've been uh, hinting to that. Oh, Gil, Gil has raised a question. All right. Hi, yeah. There you go. You can talk. Yeah, uh, could, you, could you just show the slide before again? Uh, it was yeah, just going very fast. Okay, here, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so the scale is uh, 0.06 MeV, so that's like 0.6 Kelvin. Uh, right, but but uh, the point is that you can't, so a better scale would be arbitrary A units here. And, and, and that's uh -huh. big, big, because we are, uh, I'm artificially in making my interaction weak. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to just focus on uh, one of the uh, Heliasberg equations. If my interaction is uh, is actually what it is in FTBG, then I cannot just focus on on, on that. It's an uh, it's a set of coupled equations, and and that would uh, uh, and that's how it would. Uh, so the actual TC value would change. And also, since it's 2D, the TC is actually is not set by the, it's not necessarily set by the uh, uh, temperature corresponding to your, uh, to formation of a Cooper pair, but rather by the temperature corresponding to a coherent phase through your whole sample. So it's a, the a BKT uh, transition. So uh, this TC here, which I have is a bit misleading. Mm -hmm. And also, could, could you say again, uh, the so the phonon umklap processes. So before you show the, the spectrum of the phonons and you show how it gets uh, folded on itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's just phonons versus atoms, right? Uh, phonons and then versus the, atoms. Uh, oh, yeah, the, atom, the atomic potential folds the spectrum of the phonons on itself. Uh, right, so it's, uh, I guess, yes, it's the... Uh, and, and opens gaps. Yes, and then, yes. And then now, so the phonon umklap, is that, uh, so a phonon, so, so this is an electron phonon process, right? Mm -hmm. Where the elect, where in the process, um, electron, sorry, in the process, the total momentum of phonon and electron can get a reciprocal lattice vector. Is that right? Or yes. is there a better way to describe it? Yes, I, that, that, that's a, a good way to des des describe it. So like uh, your uh, uh, momentum needs to be preserved up to the uh, 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 reciprocal lattice vector. And therefore, you have this possibility of uh, extra changing this additional momentum with your lattice. But but also in general, uh, with uh, with other L electrons, right? Because the band structure is the same. Uh, right. So but, but it's a single things. electron phonon process, right? So it's just that there's a reciprocal lattice vector that can be split between the resulting phonon and electron. So this is not electron-electron interaction. No, no, no. But, electron phonon. But uh, yes, yeah, but, but then, but you, you, then you make out of it electron-electron interaction. 
uh, when you uh, integrated out, yes, the, 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 the phonons. phonons. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Uh, so uh, we have this uh, this own club enhancement. So the origins is uh, so we ask what what are the origins of of this uh, en enhancement and and uh, if, if we just look at what are the uh, characteristic uh, frequencies to to keep keep this in mind and these are the frequencies at, at which our uh, phonon folds so if we had a gap then these frequencies would be shifted around and then if we plot what's the uh, electron phonon spectral function, which in the context of uh, superconductivity, it tells us eh, eh, how much a pairing occurs at, uh, in each uh, frequency range. You will see that with addition of each of those UMCLA processes, the peak of it shifts. And, and, uh, and, and at some point it is, 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 is saturates and the peak of it, it occurs at the uh, uh, a frequency which corresponds to addition of all of these new uh, new uh, branches. And the idea is, uh, uh, and, and if you wanted to understand it, you, you could say as, okay, let us consider, 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 consider for each of those uh, 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 for each of those, uh, when I add for each of those umclap uh, processes, we can com compute what's the effective e e coupling of our theory. We can compute what's the e characteristic uh, uh, scale for for the pairing, and then just chug it into the uh, VCS formula, and we will see that uh, we have a dome which doesn't look the same in in terms of uh, the. If, if, uh, if feeling shape, but it ir irrespects the irrelative uh, uh, ATC e values. But because we, we use this uh, uh, this uh, naive ATC e formula with the characteristic circle just set by this, we end up with uh, TC values which are just simply out of uh, this world. And and this is a hand a waving explanation for what is happening, but you could think of it is that each of those UMCLA processes, it, it adds up to the e coupling. And, uh, uh, and, and, and that's how we, 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 we get this uh, an enhancement of a superconductivity uh, in uh, ATPG if you, if you follow this an analysis. And of course, the important question to ask is how, how could this ever be probed? And the idea is that these UNCLA processes will leave an imprint in our physical observables. And uh, one of these observables which, uh, which we focused on is the tunneling density of cetates. So uh, in an S-wave pairing, which, the, which is the one that I am, uh, analyzing here, we would ex expect uh, to always have a, a coherence peak uh, corresponding to the uh, size of uh, a gap. But then be be because of these additional wiggles in your, uh, or, or these additional features in your uh, spectral function, you have uh, uh, new, new features which will appear in your EDI DV, and these features occur at the at, at the at characteristic frequencies which uh, correspond to the UMCLA processes. And that's all encoded in our spectral function. Now, uh, because of the model which we use here, uh, the a bandwidth ends at, at this line, which is dashed. Uh, so the contribution of the 2G and 3G processes is in the in a gap, so this would be in a gap between the flat band and the dispersive band, but in an actual sample, it's um, more likely that the bandwidth would be shifted uh, upwards. So, so these additional uh, additional uh, wiggles, which here are very uh, pronounced, would be less so uh, invisible. But with all of that being said, uh, this is all done in n equals to 20 limits. So in actual samples, which don't work in this 
if, 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 if we clean it, we could actually see the uh, features to be more uh, pronounced. And, and, and this idea is, of course, uh, it's, 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 it's not new. It's, it's something which was seen in other strongly coupled systems where the spectral function also has two peaks. And these two peaks are reflected in the, in the IDV, which uh, see very in, in, unnoticeable uh, drops at, at these uh, uh, frequencies. So, uh, so this would be our uh, idea how, how, how one can search for the presence of these one club uh, processes. Now, uh, so, so this concludes uh, the section on phonons and, and in the last uh, 15 minutes or so, I just wanted to uh, touch upon uh, the plasma channel, which is uh, perhaps a bit more uh, exotic. And the uh, idea is that uh, the phonon mechanism is the most uh, most likely one given all of the experimental evidence. Uh, but uh, in nonetheless, it's it's very interesting to look at the uh, possible uh, purely mm -hmm. electronic mechanism and the. And motivation for, for this is that the plasmon dispersions in ATBG is much, and in general in, in narrow band systems is, is, in, is a bit unusual. And what I mean by this is we have a plasmon which uh, extends above the characteristic uh, energy scale of electron electron e, e interactions, but at the same time it's at a comparable uh, frequency. So it's not massively up above it, uh, but at the same time, it's not I I very low. So this means that the characteristic pairing frequency in, in an actual mechanism, which occurs near the, uh, uh, near the uh, uh, plasma frequency, will actually see an access to all of the uh, electronic dig dig degrees of Freedom, and and if you're interested uh, more to uh, sorry, I mean that the plasmons in in TBG and in general and, and narrowband systems are are uh, interesting on its own. And if you would like to have a look at, at, at some other papers, then you're more than uh, welcome to. But the question is, what does it mean for uh, superconductivity? So. Uh, what we want to analyze uh, now is, is the is actually plasmon channel and, and how it interplays with phonons. So one uh, one key thing to keep in mind is that we will work with a, 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 an interaction which is a frequency dependent. We compute the frequency dependent part through a, uh, through. A, a dielectric screening obtained through RPA approximation. And now uh, what I just wanted to uh, make clear and, 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 uh, and notice that uh, in a purely electronic appearing channel, the Coulomb interaction is overall ir irrepulsive, but at certain frequencies, uh, uh, when you, uh, uh, this interaction is uh, overall less repulsive and, and when you are solving for the, mo uh, for the super conducting gap uh, in this problem, it's possible that the, uh, these, uh, these low frequency uh, uh, fluctuations will give rise to a retardation of your Coulomb interaction and actually make it uh, make it attractive and 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 and, and a good explanation of it is, is given in 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 this book or this that's the one which I uh, like the most and you want to have a look at it. So the uh, gist of it is that a, a plasmon immediated pairing is it possible in a TBG. You, you will see, and that's the most notable features that it occurs at, at, at the feeling of 2.45, and that's away from the Ivanhoff singularity, as opposed to the 
F F F F F F F F F F purely F F phononic channel, which occurs at the Vankov singularity and then shifts away. You will also see that there's very little enhancement of it with each of the umkla processes, and that's the a red line corresponds to the plasmon channel. And actually, when you add very large momentum processes, you have killed all of the, sorry, you are going at momentas where, where there's no effective attraction and you have just a conventional uh, uh, conventional Coulomb repulsion, which e e e contributes in, into your pairing and therefore there's a slight a decrease in your TC. Now, uh, when we add and we look at the, uh, when, when we add a phonons into this analysis and we look at both phonons and plasmons at the same time, how they uh, work with one another, then we will see that they actually aid one another. So uh, they, uh, there's an overall increase in the, uh, uh, in the super air conductivity. And, and uh, if you didn't know anything about plasmon mediated superconductivity, what it actually shows is that you need to look at the, uh, your Coulomb interaction and the uh, dynamical screening because the plasmon modes are uh, uh, at uh, energies which are not so different to the actual electronic degrees of freedom. You cannot just assume uh, that the Thomas Fermi uh, screening is, is sufficient and Thomas Fermi screening is what would give you uh, just a a repulsion which will uh, which would uh, suppress TC. You 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 need to look at the whole problem uh, uh, of how, how uh, the uh, dynamical screening enters. And now uh, uh, you know uh, the a reason why the 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 curriculum interaction here has such a big effect when we analyze at the interplay of phonons and plasmons is that uh, if, you if you remember the phonon umkla processes are occur at, uh, at 2 MeV and 4 MeV and, and, and 6, 6 MeV and, and these are the same frequencies where, where the, uh, uh, where the uh, uh, plasma frequency is. So we want to ask uh, very briefly, how can we understand this shape? Uh, so to, to do that, we go back to the gap equation and, and we will choose to now turn off or uh, simplify each of these uh, elements because as such, the problem is very uh, complex and, and see whether the dome looks uh, vaguely similar. And so firstly, we will look at the, at the interaction and then we will look at the f, f form factors so the actual uh, uh, the actual a, a dynamically screen interaction shows very little dependence on feeling it looks pretty much the same for 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 all feeling what's interesting is that when when you look at, uh, so this is a minus log of the interaction times the density of cetates it's least irrepulsive. So that's the place where the pairing occurs at the f, f, f finite and momentum, and, but it's a broad dome. And now uh, what ten turns out is if you want to uh, understand why unusually this uh, it's least irrepulsive at the f finite pairing, you would need to look at whether the uh, in individual uh, uh, terms which enter into your uh, screened interaction. And, and that's this idea, which was also seen in the ab initio e e calculations, is that at, at low feelings, so when you're close to charge neutrality point, your uh, polarization function is uh, dominated by uh, interband it, 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 it transitions, and then it follows uh, a linear dispersion, uh, which actually is proportional to the Fermi velocity of the bands at this level. But then as soon as you enter into 
if 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 finite dopings or or large momenta, then you sit sit to have a contribution from intra uh, intraband processes, and this then it will suppress this 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 peak, and then at a very large momenta, so uh, dark line here, uh, the line the bar for each of the colors corresponds to the size of your Berlin zone, because at these large momenta we don't care at all about the flat bands. We just focus on the uh, flat band to it dispersive band uh, it transition. It goes back to the polarization function of a uh, uh, monolayer graphene or two monolayers put on top of one another. So this particular peak is the explanation for, for, for that feature. But as it turns out, that's not uh, the origins of why we have the high symmetric dome. Uh, and uh, to see that, uh, let's say we ignore everything uh, we know about the uh, it, a dielectric function of TPG, and we just focus on something which is called a plasmon pole approximation. So we take a conventional equilumb uh, interaction, and we say that we have one plasmon which occurs at the plasma frequency, and you see that at low frequencies the uh, 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 interaction is not repulsive it's actually it, it goes to zero and as you and, and as you come closer to plasma frequency we have more and more of the uh, interaction and then at uh, uh, at large frequencies we end up with a normal coulomb term so you will see that the uh, uh, a pairing occurs uh, closely uh, at frequencies lower than the plasma frequency or close to the plasma frequency. So when we bring the plasma frequency closer to the uh, a chemical potential, you have a boost in your TC, but the boost overall, it's all the time peaked near these, uh, near these high feelings of 2.5. So the uh, overall shape of, of, uh, of a dome, when we go through a full uh, a calculation to the one which has just a a plasmon pole, it still peaks at the 2.5. It's roughly the same values. So that, that tells us that it's probably not this, not, not, it's not a contained in, in your, in your uh, a, a, a Coulomb interaction. So what's the origins of this asymmetric peak must be coming from the form, fa form factors. And like I said, these form factors, they carry the interaction. Uh, they, they carry information about the a wave function. So uh, if you analyze how these form factors look like, how does this uh, overall uh, this overlap look like as a function of feeling, then, then you will see that it's overall flat. It's, it's the same. We see that there's a, uh, it's large. It's one at low momenta. Then it, it decreases. But then you have an additional peak, which can just comes from, from the UMCLA processes. But it's also peaked at this 2.5, and uh, and and this increase in the form factor is the explanation uh, for why our dome is uh, asymmetric there. And and uh, uh, so th this is this is uh, very interesting because it shows that what actually sets the shape of a dome, at least in the purely electronic channel is, is uh, coming from the underlying uh, uh, geometry of your uh, model. Okay, but what are the physical consequences of, of all of this? And to that uh, uh, aspect, I would look at the uh, role of screening. So you can think of it as just taking TBG and uh, with the help of a, a gate, you're suppressing the pairing. And you will see that as you uh, bring the air gate closer, your TC it, it decreases, which is to be expected because uh, uh, the additional a bonus coming from plasmons is being killed and we just end up with a, a phonon dome. But what's interesting and, and here you shouldn't look too much at the values is, is that you can have a possibility of a non monotonic behavior with your gate. So what, what I mean by this is that at, at, when the gate is at infinity, we have both a 
plasmons and a phonons, which a contribute. Then you bring your a gate closer, 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 and then you're suppressing the attractive part of the uh, electron electron interaction. Then at certain a characteristic a momenta or characteristic gate distances, you would kill completely the uh, attractive part of your electronic channel, and you would then end up with a, a, a standard uh, if 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 phonon with attract a uh, phonon with ir irrepulsive coulomb sit, sit, sit story whereby uh, bringing the gate you're you're killing the irrepulsion and you're increasing the etc so uh, if one could see this uh, trend in an actual experiment that would be a, a confirmation that a uh, plasmons uh, and phonons uh, are interplaying with one another Okay, so all, what I would like to just make clear from this uh, plasma analysis is that plasma frequencies are uh, comparable to the electronic bandwidth. We can't approximate the Coulomb uh, contribution as mere as static uh, repulsion, uh, that the uh, dynamical screening helps in enhancing the superconducting pairing, and there's a rich behavior to be seen with a gate. And with that, I wanted to finish uh, right on time, uh, is that we see uh, that electron phonon interactions can drive superconductivity over a big range of feelings, and that unclamped processes, which are a, a thing unique to these MORS systems, these MORS unclamped processes will, uh, will give rise to a dramatic enhancement of the appearing scale. Now, and these onclear processes will leave an imprint uh, in, in physical observables, such as ultrasound attenuation but the, uh, or, or, or some other ob observables. And the one which we focus on was the tunneling density of cetates. Next, I, I also show that, the, uh, uh, that there's a possibility of a, a plasmon mediated pairing, which occurs, uh, uh, the peak of the dome will occur away uh, from the event of a singularity, and that's in agreement with other works that analyze the uh, role of electron electron interactions in pairing. Uh, but if we look at both plasmons and phonons, then uh, those two will act uh, together to enhance your superconductivity. And uh, there's this very interesting interplay of, of the uh, <clears throat> of the uh, uh, Coulomb interaction and with a gate. So with the help of a gate, you can be killing certain, uh, all of the pairing which occurs at, at low moment uh, such that you will end up with overall uh, a repulsive uh, uh, interaction and then it reproduces the conventional uh, satori. And uh, in the future, I think what, what's, what would be interesting to analyze is what actually sets the pairing scale, and like I said in answer to Gil's question, is is, is actually the superfluid stiffness. So it's, it's worth looking at what sets the scale for the superfluid stiffness, and that's not only uh, a kinetic degrees of freedom, but also ones coming from uh, geometry of, of your system. Then, uh, and, and that's inspired by experiments, is that one should look at the effects of uh, interactions and how they change your band structure. So whether, whether your band structure, uh, after it's been changed by the role of interactions, whether the resulting TC will increase or decrease within the same framework. And um, uh, uh, what I think is a very fruitful for me being here at uh, Eckhart Tech and being ex ex exposed to, to, this, uh, to, to uh, Stefan's group is that uh, it's worth looking at the superconductivity away from the magic angle. So the fact that you see so, so, so superconductivity at uh, 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 0 0.8 degrees or 0 0.9 de de degrees. Uh, and most importantly, what is the role played by spin orbit coupling, which is a topic uh, completely uh, untouched, uh, definitely uh, by me, but I also think by uh, a lot of the theory work. 
uh, and how it will affect TC. And with that, I wanted to finish and acknowledge my sources of funding. And if you're interested, please have a look at the paper. And that's it. If, if thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Cyprian. All right, let's stop the recording.